Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Going to have a conversation with Mr. Josh Douglas. He's the Chief Technical Officer at Bridge Connector. And he's joining us on the program to talk about the ongoing shift from fee-for-service to value-based care. Welcome to the program, Josh Douglas. Thanks, Neil, for having me. Now, um, as Chief Technical Officer, give us a bit of background and tell us about Bridge Connector. Sure. Bridge Connector is an integration as a service company. Uh, we deliver no code, uh, a no code platform for integrations to our customers, uh, connecting their disparate systems in the healthcare space to enable uh, automation and workflows. Um, so really solving the business problems uh, that healthcare faces uh, by automating their workflows with our platform. Now we're talking about fee for service to value based care. Let's talk about, you know, fee for service. It's it's pretty obvious, but what is fee for service care? Yeah, Neil, so fee for, fee for service is uh, is the traditional healthcare reimbursement model where a provider gets paid to render a specific service such as uh, a knee replacement surgery or an office visit or um uh, you know, a uh, another another type of surgery and they get paid based on delivering that service whether or not they deliver that service successfully or whether or not it's a failed surgery or something like that it doesn't matter they still get paid right yeah that's that's the ki- that's the kicker neil um they get paid regardless of the outcome um now there are some gotchas there if uh, if a patient readmits within a certain amount of time uh the the provider does get ding but they still receive their fee regardless of if the patient has a successful outcome or not what is value based care so value based care is is reimbursement based on a successful outcome um and there's many different variations of it uh a couple that we see in the market are uh, a bundle So Medicare, CMS, will pay uh, a certain target price for, uh, for example, a total joint replacement. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that provider is on the hook for 90 days after that procedure uh, for the patient's total cost of care. So they're incentivized to, one, provide better care for the patient, um, and then, two, incentivized to follow up with that patient to make sure they're doing uh, their physical therapy, they're uh, adhering to their meds, whatever it may be, uh, because they're at risk um, or they're incentivized uh, based on that outcome. Physicians are, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, bogged down. They've got a lot of things to do. What about their staff following up? Are they are they the ones who have to or they have to have a, a staff member or someone follow up with these patients because the physician can't be doing all of these things themselves, right? That's correct. Um, <clears throat> what we're seeing in the market is uh, sometimes third party companies coming in, uh, sharing risk with the providers and doing the care management of that patient or the nurse navigation of that patient post uh, post procedure or post episode. Um, so you're right. The doctors don't have time to follow up with the patient every day to make sure they're doing their, what they're supposed to be doing. They need to move on to the next surgery. Um, but they are enlisting sometimes uh, staff in their own office, uh, nurses or, or medical assistants to follow up. And sometimes they're they're working with third party companies to handle that. When Bridge Connector steps in, how do you streamline all of this massive process to make it more um, to make a much better patient outcome and to make sure that the uh, physicians or the facility don't get, as you say, dinged for substandard care? Yeah, that's a great question. So what we're really talking about, Neil, is the is access to data. Uh, both the provider uh, and the care management team needs data in order to care for that patient appropriately and receive the best outcome for the patient. So the provider is first working out of usually an acute hospital system, an EMR. Um, then the provider is also working out of their practice EMR, um, which is usually a different system than the hospital. The care management team or the nurse navigators are working out of a completely separate system. Um, and then not to mention uh, physical therapy. Um, the patient may go to a, a SNF, a skilled nursing facility for a short mm-hmm. time. All of these systems are completely separate. And what, what it does is create data silos. And so you can't have a complete view of that patient's health uh, from the, the, these data silos. And that's where Bridge Connector comes in. 
we connect the data. Um, we literally build bridges between these systems mm -hmm. um, to make that data actionable across the continuum of care so that we deliver that actionable data to each of that, uh, each member of that patient's care team at the time that they need it to uh, provide the appropriate care for the patient. So the information that is actually needed to care for that patient post uh, operation, post whatever, that pertinent information is all that is presented and you, I guess, uh, Bridge Connector sifts out the extraneous information that someone would normally have to you know, dig through to get what they actually needed? That's correct. In most cases, we focus on a specific use case and workflow. Um, and in the example we use, the total joint replacement, there are pieces of data that are more important and actionable than others. And so focusing on that specific workflow for the end user, in this case, it may be a nurse navigator, um, and, and automating that workflow. So, you know, they'll, they'll need pieces of information like the operative note and the patient's met current medication list and allergies. Um, and, and things like that, but they may not need uh, their immunization history, for instance. Okay, um, okay. So focusing on those specific use cases and workflows and making the data actionable um, is what we're focused on here at Bridge Connector. Now, how is that data made actionable without code? You mentioned a no-code platform. <laughs> Uh, we've got a lot of smart people here, Neil. Um, we've uh, we've we've essentially uh, spent a lot of time uh, with a lot of our engineers and architects uh, writing the code um, in the background in our platform, um, and then enabling through a user experience and user interface uh, a what we call a citizen integrator, um, a non you know a non developer, a non engineer to click um, and drag and drop uh, through their integration and automate their workflow. Um, so it's, it's a pretty groundbreaking platform and we're pretty proud of it. So basically there is code, but the user never has to engage or deal with that code, right? That's right. And that's the key. And that's the, the paradigm shift in integration uh, in healthcare. So, uh, you know, I've worked with many different integration platforms before trying to connect these disparate systems to make data actionable. And uh, we've always had to write code, um, always had to be a, a, a specialist in, in those integration platforms. And so we're trying to change that. You know, facilities hire and um, let go IT professionals daily. Uh, Ten years from now, you've got a client, um, you've you know, you've connected their systems, things are working fine and they need um, they need to hire someone. Do they need to hire someone or do they need to come back to you to say, hey, we've got a problem here? How does that work? Yeah, I would say um, we, we enable the business users so they don't, they don't really need to hire that IT staff or rehire that IT staff. Mm -hmm. um, they can. Uh, we do work with, uh, with companies that have IT staff and they, they love to work with us um, just as uh, well as the business users. Um, but really focusing on that business problem um, and us becoming experts in solving that problem for our customers allows them to have that relationship with us on whatever level uh, we meet the customer where they are. Does your company lend itself more or less to a specific type of care uh, structure, say ER care? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say um, we, uh, we're currently focused on... Um, I would say across the continuum of care, but uh, we're, we're focused right now more on the ancillary services. So post-acute behavioral health specialty, um, a lot of non-acute things, um, because that's traditionally where uh, the market has been underserved. Um, and we're pretty passionate about uh, any sized healthcare organization uh, having that data that they need in those automated workflows that they need. In your experience and in conversations and feedback, what feedback are you getting from uh, healthcare providers about this transition from fee for service to value based? Yeah, I think uh, the general consensus is that that they like it. Um, if you're a good provider, uh, which every provider I think wants to be a good provider, uh, they care about their patients, um, and so they're willing to go at risk or be incentivized to deliver. Uh, good care um, and their patients to have good outcomes. 
Um, and it really uh, empowers the providers um, and their abilities and their care team to deliver that, uh, that good outcome for the patient. Josh, where can our listeners go online and get much more information about Bridge Connector? Sure, they can go on our website at www.bridgeconnector.com um, and uh, get all the information they need. Great, great. Josh, been a pleasure talking with you this morning. Hope we get an opportunity to talk again in the future as uh, Bridge Connector progresses and uh, integrates more and more facilities. Looking forward to it, Neil. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio with Mr. Josh Douglas, Chief Technology Officer at Bridge Connector. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.